Thank you for your patience, everyone. Uh, welcome, and thank you for joining our uh, first in a series of webinars highlighting our key partner, uh, NetSuite partner solution, starting with uh, Readsoft Online and Spearcraft for AP automation, uh, which we're excited about. Uh, the webinar series for information will additionally cover uh, integration, artificial intelligence, warehouse management, data capture, and demand planning. So keep an eye out for those in the future. For this presentation from Brightbridge, we've got uh, myself, I'm Julian Griffiths, and Fiona Waterfield, and who's our marketing manager. Uh, from Spearcraft, we've got Jacob Lloyd and Kevin Shepard. Uh, and this, this partnership with Spearcraft and Readsoft Online is our most recent addition to our uh, Brightbridge portfolio. And I'm particularly excited about helping our clients streamline AP processes using this platform because it's been something we've been asked about quite consistently over the last five years. But there's more to come on that with that with the presentation. So a few housekeeping issues. There's, there will be a Q&A at the end. Um, but if you want to submit some questions, please use the chat. Um, there's a option to chat uh, to submit to everyone or to the organizers only. I'll leave that to your discretion. So your time's valuable. Uh, we appreciate that. So we'll pass over now to Jacob and Kevin and uh, we'll speak a little bit later. Hello, it's um, Jacob here, Jacob Lloyd from Speedgraph. Um, just wanted to go through a couple of things first to tell you who it is that we are. Um, to set the scene just a little bit. So we're, we're here to talk about uh, Cofax Readsoft. So who are Cofax? They're an American intelligent process automation software provider based in California, founded in 1985. Provide a whole host of, of different solutions around intelligent automation, including this um, product we're here to talk about today. But when it comes to information capture, Cofax is and has been for decades a household name and for good reason. Um, it's used by the top banks, insurers, local and central government departments to transform processes and get business ready for a digital era. So Cofax has been repeatedly named a leader in intelligent automation. And it's been leading the market for more than 20 years. And back in 2014, when Cofax acquired the Swedish company Readsoft, an accounts payable invoice specialist, um, Readsoft was already a document automation leader. In fact, they've been a leader for so long, it was Readsoft who actually first coined the term. So the combination between the expertise of Cofax and the innovative Readsoft solution has triggered really rapid growth for Readsoft since this acquisition. It's a lot of growth because it's essentially a really good product. No one ever gets in trouble for buying Microsoft or gets in trouble for buying Cisco. Cofax is the equivalent to that in this market. So I just wanted to say that you're in really good company using Readsoft because it's the number one, it's the market leader, More more companies use it than, than any other um, AP solution. And you're in safe hands with a, with a company like Cofax, um, backing all of that up. So then who are we? Um, well, we're Speedgraph. We're here to talk to you because we're Cofax's distribution partner in the UK. So we have a partnership with Brightbridge Solutions. And we work with, with Brightbridge and other, um, other partners in the document capture space. We're really excited particularly about working with Brightbridge um, as their NetSuite expertise really complements Readsoft Online. As a customer, you want all of your business systems to work seamlessly together. And that's what we feel this partnership can deliver. A fantastic ERP solution augmented by an AP front end that ensures data going into that system is structured, it's precise, it's timely, so you can get on doing what you do best and delighting your customers. But we at Speedgraph, we have over 6,000 partners. We've been in the business for a very long time. And that's that's why we were chosen by Cofax to be the distribution partner here in the UK. So that's just the background of who we are, why it is that there's a, the chain of Brightbridge to Speedgraph to Cofax. That's just the structure of, of, um, of the organization. But that's not what we wanted to talk about. We're here to talk about Readsoft. And I wanted to give you an initial, not overly technical introduction, just to tell you what it is that Readsoft actually does. What, what are we gonna talk about? So every business has the same core challenge. How can we increase business value faster than we incur costs? And that's of course what we need to talk about today as well. Now for this, I wanna hand back over to Julian because who's better to talk through your business challenges than the team who know you well already? It was the obstacles you told the team at Brightbridge that you're facing 
that first led Julian to search for the right tool to help solve them for you. And that search has led him to Retoft Online and, and led to this webinar. So you know, if I can hand back over to Julian, the first thing we need to talk about is what are the problems that we need to solve? What are the issues you've told Julian that you have that he can help with? So um, Julian. Thanks, Jacob. Yes. Um, and basically, over the last uh, few years, we've been involved with NetSuite. We've been regularly asked by our customers and our clients about AT AP automation tools. Um, we previously explored a number of alternative solutions, uh, but the problem with those, they've been proved a little too costly for our customers uh, and mainly delivered from North America. So it's really timely that we get this UK based uh, uh, partnership in place. So the, the key issues highlighting the first three for me, uh, the control over data capture and, uh, and automation, the cost of processing invoices manually, and then the agility of being able to remove those people from robust uh, or, or uh, time consuming uh, tasks, keying in invoices into more productive things. So we really believe, and we've got customers using this already, that it delivers on all of those things. So we're, we're happy with this. Let's have a little bit, little further look at, uh, at what it does. Thanks, Julian. So this slide here is hopefully going to help you get a, a quick picture of what we mean by AP automation. What what does this this solution actually do? So AP automation is taking the internal process of an invoice and getting rid of as much of the time consuming or manual, costly, error prone, laborious, slow stages as you can. And that's divided into a few steps. So at, at the beginning here, you can see invoices. It's been created by a supplier and it's sent normally as a paper invoice or maybe as an electronic invoice. It could be an XML or PDF, a variety of different formats. That invoice is then received by yourselves and de dependent on the format, it's either scanned, could be on a mobile phone, a multifunctional device, a, a mailroom scanner or anything or it's automatically rerouted into the AP automation process from, from email or another ingestion point. It doesn't really matter where it's coming from. For paper-based invoices, you might need some sort of sorting or document separation, but Readsoft will pick up invoices from a folder or from email, however you need it to, to make sure you don't have to waste time uploading and collating all of these, all of these documents. So that's, that's the very beginning. The invoice comes into the system and then it's uploaded to Readsoft online in the cloud where Readsoft's market leading AI identifies the invoice format, extracts information from the page, and passes the digital document and associated metadata onto your ERP. So if the image quality is good, upwards of 85%, or in many cases, much higher, much more of your invoices can be processed straight through using Readsoft online. So where the system is unsure about a value, maybe the image quality is bad or the page was damaged or two invoices were scanned together into a single document because a person made a mistake earlier in the process, then those, image, those images will be picked up. Those invoices will be picked up by Readsoft Online and passed to a person to check. So 85% or more of them will go straight through, but where there's an uncertainty, it goes through to a person for validation. That person can split or join pages, check invoice numbers or dates which weren't readable and any other validation that needs to be done. Because, because it's cloud-based and it runs in a browser, you can do that validation from anywhere on any device. Of course, there's a lot more that goes on here. Line items, you know, for uh, PO-based invoices, GL account coding, etc. But Kevin will get into more of the clever stuff later. This is just to give you a quick snapshot of, of what it does and how it works. So that's what accounts payable invoice processing automation is all about. That's Readsoft Online in a nutshell. It gets rid of the manual work of processing invoices, means fewer errors, a faster turnaround, and more time for your staff to spend on the higher value work. And it does use a lot of very clever software. It's easy to use, it's quick to implement. Being cloud-based, it doesn't need IT involvement. And being a subscription model, it brings an immediate return on investment. So what does it do? It picks up your invoices, it pulls out the data, it checks the maths, it validates what it's got there. And if it all makes sense, it passes those, those invoices and the associated searchable metadata is created back through to your ERP. So why do you need this? In a typical small or medium business, most invoices are still tragically processed manually. 
and this takes ages. Sometimes people spend half of a month on it, several weeks out of every month. Invoices get lost, they get stuck together, duplicated, payments are delayed and penalties are incurred. The data isn't searchable until way farther down the line, so people will get chased for invoices they've already received. And the processing queue, with people chasing payments, are told the invoices maybe they were never sent, nobody knows where they are, payments can run down to the wire, the business doesn't have control. And what, mean, what that means is the AP team spend all their time playing catch up on menial tasks and it doesn't give them the time that they need to solve real questions in the business accounting, to talk with people or to perform analysis and make decisions and provide some data that can inform business strategy. It's a mess and it costs a lot of money. So the story after AP automation is different. We've given people some of that time back. Things are peaceful, invoices are paid on time, there are fewer penalties, less customer service time is wasted on people chasing payments or invoices, suppliers are friendlier, and often that means taking advantage of uh, favorable rates for early payment. People smile at you in the street, the sun is shining, there are fewer invoice errors to fix, fewer lost invoices to chase, payment runs are on time and predictable, it's, it's a much nicer world. So why, why a cloud solution? What, what's so good about a cloud solution, particularly for AP processing? Well, one of the most important things, right in the middle of this slide here, the, the key for me is, is minimal IT involvement. This, this is a, something which is owned and, and managed and the decisions are taken by the people who are processing invoices themselves. It gives, it's empowering to people managing invoices. And also, of course, it's far more secure. You don't need to set up servers. You don't need to add it to a network. It's, it's all, it all runs in the cloud. Um, and you can, of course, you can improve, approve mobile. You can improve when you're at home. It removes a lot of the traditional barriers to, to getting work done efficiently. So before I go on to, before I pass over to Kevin, who's going to give you a bit of a demo, I thought I'd try and make this real with a, a very recent example of a Readsoft Online customer. So this one here, a company called Toymaster. And to quote Matt Dimmock, the systems admin there, Toymaster is a national association of independently owned toy shops. And when a new store joins our buying group, we collect every invoice from our suppliers and process all those transactions centrally. Sounds good. But this amounts to tens of thousands of transactions handled every year and keeping track is a real challenge. The trouble they had before implementing Readsoft Online, Toymeister, like, like so many other organizations of a similar size, processed most of its transactions manually. And what that meant is a lot of operational challenges. To start with, there's the infrastructure costs of separately processing hundreds of different members, maintaining individual pigeonholes for each store, mailing out invoices twice a week. There's an irregular flow of paperwork and a quiet start to each month, followed by a flood of invoices at the end. What that meant is they're, they're not using staff time effectively or efficiently. And doing everything on paper also made it harder to study long-term purchasing or sales trends. There was no centralized resource to assess what people were doing, what people were buying. And the inefficiencies of a manual system, system coupled with the challenge posed by new industry regulations meant that Toymaster had to invest in some sort of automatic invoicing technology. So they knew that automation could make things easier, but it was actually the introduction of European Union legislation that forced them to take action. What, what that means is, according to the EU, there's, there's a need, increasingly with Brexit, to declare what goods are coming in and out of the UK. So it's important to be able to capture every line item from invoices. Now that's not feasible at scale manually. And it's that realization, the recognition of um, the potential efficiency, as well as compliance benefits, that led Toymaster towards the Readsoft online solution. And of course it's made a difference. What difference has it made? In this case, 21 workers could be reallocated to more interesting higher value tasks. That saved the business a lot of money, gave them resource to put where it was needed. But the gains of course are a lot greater than the time saved. It had a real impact on the business as a whole. It means solving compliance issues means being able to analyze trends more effectively and earlier to enable better planning and resource management. If there are fewer errors, less time spent chasing up those errors and dealing with complaints that result from 
And with line item data captured, this huge insights can be gained into sales, which in this case enables strategic shifts across the business to flow quickly from patterns in the data, insights that were not achievable before. So, so that's what it does. That's why you should take a look at what it does. But to look at more exactly, more precisely what it what it can do and how it works and what it looks like, I want to hand back over to Kevin, our head of pre-sales, who's going to show you in more detail exactly what it does, how it works, and the intelligence that that gives it this um, this advantage. So over to you, Kevin. Thanks, Jacob. So um, just moving uh, on from the example, I just wanted to touch upon the architecture slightly. Um, this is uh, a generic architecture picture for Readsoft Online. It obviously works with many ERP systems uh, that are available, um, one of which is obviously the NetSuite product, uh, the Brightbridge um, use and support from their side. Um, so what we're looking at is content uh, coming inbound. So whether that's from a, uh, a local or network scanner or a multifunction device um, that could obviously be at a branch office, um, or if we're looking at email based or electronic PDF files, they come in, they uh, get processed through into Readsoft Online, um, uploaded or sent in via email. The software will then interpret, verify, um, and once it's happy, the obviously all that invoice content is correct, it then transfers it back out the system. Um, in uh, the case of NetSuite, it passes it straight back into NetSuite um, and sets it ready for the, that next stage in the ERP. Um, if you also had other uh, ERP systems due to company acquisitions and things, we, you can also do a separate pass out for a different system, um, you know, in a standard XML format or again, a direct integration where needed. Um, it has uh, the concept of an integrated repository. Um, most people use it just as temporary space while things are being processed. Uh, and obviously you get some background reporting uh, and things you can pass on from this as well. So just uh, a few screenshots as an example, and then we'll run a live demo. The scanning functionality, um, it's all HTML5 based, it's uh, browser rich, so it's nice and easy for users to uh, work with and pick up and understand. There's no application that you need to install locally uh, or anything like that. So here we can see the screenshot of the verify uh, stage, which I'll run through in a minute. We're showing the invoice, we're showing the um, sort of key details on uh, the right hand side, the key index values that we're extracting, um, and we're also showing a snippet of the XML that we can pass through uh, as part of that process. If we then look at document separation, so obviously when you're scanning yourself, it's quite easy to separate your invoices before uploading them into the system and make sure that they're correct. But say you get someone, uh, one of your suppliers emails in a PDF with 10 uh, invoices in that one file. It's very straightforward to uh, just use the arrow keys and the space bar just to separate those documents out or even recombine them um, if you've separated them incorrectly as you go through that process. Then we also have the option uh, of doing line item extraction. So I know some people are only focused on the header values um, for invoice processing, but we can also take that to a line item level if required. Um, and that's extracting off of table data, which could also be across multiple pages. And again, we'll, we'll show a bit of that as part of the demonstration. So what I'll do now is just uh, go into my demo system. Um, so on here, we've got uh, a standard, as I say, browser based front end. Um, I'm showing this in the Edge browser, but it could be uh, Chrome or Firefox or any of the others. Um, I'm just going to log in with my demo user here. And at the minute, I've got no documents in the system. So we, we've got a few different ways the uh, user can process documents. The first option is we've got an upload functionality within uh, the uh, browser base itself. So I can simply select the files. So I'll just select a couple of files here. We can set, uh, have multiple buyers. So in this case, I'll set them to buyer one. Um, 
we've got different document types a again we're just processing british invoices here and if we had a pdf with multiple in we would say it was a multiple documents per file in this case they're individual so i'll just click upload on there they've been uploaded but they're going to take time to uh, flow into the system so what we can also do is we can also email invoices in so you'll get a unique email address that you can either forward invoices into or if preferred uh, hand out to some of your suppliers to send in directly so again i've just attached a couple of invoices in here and i'll just hit send on that and then the other option that we've got is to um, actually upload documents from a network drive so say you're using a multi-function device that saves them onto a network share we can automatically monitor that network share uh, with a sort of a watched folder approach so I'm just going to drop two uh, of those invoices into our upload folder on here what will happen is they will then get picked up and, and disappear into the system so if I just click back in and I click on the in progress it takes some time for these documents to obviously fly in but we can see the first couple have come in and uh, actually pending um, sort of manual verification on here if I refresh, we can see that a couple more have now come in and then the ones uh, from email will come in as well. The, as part of the process, um, I've just got an email notification to uh, let me know that there's an item waiting for verification. So again, this is a setting that you can apply so that your users aren't always having to watch that queue if you've handed this directly out to suppliers. Uh, if they can get that notification that there's something ready to do. So if I refresh, now we've now got all of the documents come in. They've all run through the server side of the process and we're all waiting verification in this example. So I'm just going to pick the first one and start it as uh, to show. So here we can see we've got the uh, invoice itself. We've got your standard zoom controls and move around to see the document and where that's extracted. On the right hand side, we've got the index values that it's extracted off of this invoice um, and we've got down the bottom the table values that it's extracted. We can also see a few extra bits of information. So, for example, we can see uh, the original file name that the way it's been tracked through the date and time it was received uh, on there. You've got the ability to add attachments if you needed to, for example, attach a PO to then have someone else uh, like a manager review it. They can then see those documents as well. Or you can add comments to the invoice again. It's similar mindset. And we can also see the history of this document. So where it got created and as it got passed through the system. So we, we order everything as we run through. So with this invoice, as an example, it's picked up the supply. It's just saying it's not certain. Um, with this supplier so I, I can just press enter and it will confirm the supplier and pass it through um, it's actually stopped on the invoice number even though it's extracted it correctly we've got a message a again this is based on rules within the system and it's essentially saying um, it looks like it's already seen this document before uh, so it could potentially be a duplicate so it's flagging it up to the user because we've got the same invoice number um, that we've run through the system before for this supplier. Uh, obviously, this is a demo system, so this document's run through a few times. So again, I can just uh, pass through. Again, with dates, we've got a message uh, pop up here telling us that the date is older than 90 days, which is a standard rule. We've allowed override here, so we can just press enter to ignore it and carry on. Um, if, for example, I was actually to make the date in the future, we can see the invoice must be before today's date um, on there. So again, you can set up your rules and logic as you need to regarding your date ranges as part of that. Um, and in this case, as I say, we allow the user to carry on the process. And we've got a similar uh, check on the due date here as well. So once all the fields are green, I can click OK and it will carry on. So what I'll do just to show you a few of the other features is if I just open up another one. So if we start with the supplier, in this case, we have matched the supplier. It's using the data. Um, we can see uh, here the supplier details that we've pulled in um, 
in this case from the master data which would flow straight in from NetSuite so we can see the uh, the different details on there the address of the supplier etc but say it hadn't got the supplier and we wanted to search the supplier if I just start typing it will actually search against that database and start showing me um, all the results that are coming in so it doesn't don't have to type much in order to get the correct value and process that through so we reference that data as we as we run through the system um, just another example say for example it hadn't picked up the invoice number on there what we can do is just point and click on the document and pull in that number through so we even though it didn't pick up we've got all the OCR data there that we can use and pull through to the system again we ran through uh, with dates um, and amounts it's just asking us to uh, confirm as we run through to make sure that the values are correct um, in this case with this example it didn't pick up the VAT which is why the uh, fields were flagged because net plus VAT didn't equal gross in this instance as soon as I've corrected that and put that in it, everything's gone green and it's all happy that uh, it's worked okay so again if I just pick up um, another one to process through we can just look at the line item data so if I click down here I can see on the table uh, we've got the line item data in here but say it hadn't uh, picked that up correctly so, so, so I haven't got any line item data in there in order to train the table we literally click on the uh, the drawer option we come in here and first we're looking for the product code and you can see it's very user friendly it tells us what to do and there's help um, around doing that so if we just come through and click on the product code oops I went too far if we go through and click on the description and then the quantity the unit price and the total price so we can actually see already in this sort of design view it's highlighted the other rows in here that follow the same format and if I click OK to accept that then when we come back in we can actually see it's extracted out the whole table uh, within there so it, it's quite happy um, based on that little bit of training that it's gone through and it'll obviously use that next time it uh, sees a invoice uh, for this supplier so we'll just run through that one as well obviously the others are the same on there um, the other piece that we've uh, got on here is as well as uploading as I was saying we can also pass the details out as uh, XML um, and things on here so just to show you those documents um, that it's picked up we can see the XML uh, that it's picked up so the invoice number and date etc have passed out obviously as I say with NetSuite this would pass straight into it then we've got our line item data in here as well and then we've also got a PDF rendition um, of the document itself so we can see the invoice here that's passed through um, and it's passed through in its original format uh, in a, as a color document in this instance um, we've obviously got the settings to control that so we need to okay so from a, a demonstration side it is that simple um, we've run through again we order everything as we process uh, through each of the documents so it's very straightforward for the users um, as they sort of see and we can keep track of what users are doing doing what okay so just to recap um, on here we've got um, one solution to pull in uh, all of the uh, examples with it being cloud-based it's very straightforward very uh, quick to um, on board and it keeps that advanced capture uh, and machine learning capabilities within it and that's all um, managed in the background 
so it's not something that users have to worry about building templates and things with uh, it will manage that through and you can uh, simply flag when something hasn't extracted correctly and then next time it will it will pull it through and obviously being web-based it's always available so that's it from uh, demonstration side um, Julian I don't know if there's anything else you want to add from your side no, thanks. Uh, thanks very much, Kevin. Um, much appreciated that. I think uh, from our point of view, the uh, I'm not sure there's any questions come in um, through the chat there. Kevin, before you answer any of those, before we conclude. Yeah, let me just have a look and see what we've got. Okay, so um, we've had someone ask uh, what is sort of how many invoices is a system uh, sort of capable of processing. Um, it can start from as little as 5,000 invoices a year uh, and we've got some customers using uh, Resoft Online with many hundreds of thousands um, a year so it can very much scale that. Uh, Toy Master example of you know your twenty to thirty thousand a year is a very common place for it to sit, um, but as I say, they've got sort of much smaller and much larger customers uh, as well as part of um, the solution. So it, there's, it's certainly scalable um, and certainly open to uh, different opportunities. We've also uh, had someone ask how quickly it can be deployed, which I think is a nice key question. So um, unlike some of the other technologies in this space, um, even including some of the other ones from Kofax, um, it's very quick for deployment. So it would typically would be looking at, you know, days and weeks as opposed to, you know, months and years for a deployment. Um, obviously, it's quite a structured solution, so it's very easy to on board uh, people through and it can certainly be part of um, you know part of that discussion with uh, the, the guys at Brightbridge around you know NetSuite solution and things on that side so it's very very user friendly the on user training side of it it typically you're looking at you know sort of an hour handover to a user um, and just making sure that they're, they're comfortable in it um, as you could see from the demo the actual um, process for users is very straightforward so it's mostly self-learned in that respect i don't know if we've got any other questions from anyone okay thank you kevin much appreciated okay. that um i think we'll conclude now and and thanks everyone for attending uh, we appreciate your time it's uh, we realize it's important hope we've conveyed the values and scalability of the solution for your business and you know really identify that clear return on investments available with rapid deployment and local uh, brightbridge support um my contact details are on the screen um if you don't have them already take a little note of those please get in touch with me for further details as i said we're very excited about this thank you again and we'll see you at the next webinar